Good morning, Word Warriors. It's me, Melissa, at Safe Haven Ministries. You know, I'm, I'm taking a little bit different path this morning, and I'm talking to you about something that's desperately needed in this nation, and that's revival. We need revival so badly. But for most of us, when we grew up and, and, and somebody said, well, we're going to have revival, what we thought was, well, we got another church service to go to. But, you know, the other kids will be there and we go out back and play and we're just going to have a good time and they'll play music and they'll have a guest speaker. That's not revival. That is not revival. You know, um, I'm going to take the next couple of three weeks, but I want to talk about what revival looks like what it really looks like. I don't know about you, but I long for revival in myself, in the nation, in my family, all across, I mean, the world. I just want to see revival break out. In Acts 2.17, it says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says, says God, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. I want to start on a Tuesday, February the, February the 3rd, 1970. Dawn like any other day at Asbury College in Wilmore, Kentucky. I was a student there and and we all had assigned seats. And so uh, on, on that morning, I uh, headed to my assigned seats because there were checkers up in the balcony and they could see whether you were there or not. And we were required to go Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursday, and uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, I think. I think I've got that right. But the program that followed wasn't the norm. Uh, the, the dean was scheduled to speak, and he got up, and he did speak for just a few minutes, and then he said, I don't think I'm supposed to preach today, and I'd like to have testimony service. Those of you who feel led, I want you to come up and testify. Some of us knew and some of us didn't that there had been a group, a small group of students who had made a vow to get up 30 minutes early for prayer and Bible study every day. And they were crying out to God and they were crying out for a spiritual awakening. How many of you know we're desperate for that in America? We need a spiritual awakening. Uh, as the as the students came, they began to speak prophetically across the campus, and they were saying, you know, there's an outpouring coming. But as these students began to testify, there was a, a young man, and I, I want to read what he, what he said, and I thought it was so good. He said, he got up in front of everybody, and he said this, I, I just can't believe I'm standing up here telling you what God's done for me. I have wasted my time in college up till now, but Christ has met me and I'm different. Last night, the Holy Spirit flooded in and filled my life. And now for the first time ever, ever, I'm so excited to be a Christian. I wouldn't want to go back to the emptiness of yesterday for anything. Some of you know what I'm talking about right now. You need an awakening. You need a spiritual awakening in your life. You know, the altars continued to fill. I mean, there was a mass of students at the altar. And if they couldn't find a place at the altar, we were kneeling in the chair, by the chairs all up in front. Some were in the aisles. Some were standing along the, the, the walls just weeping. And they were they began to play just as I am. Testimonies came out on the stage, hidden sins, cheating, theft, prejudice, stealing, hatred. Uh, and I remember students making their way to other students and saying, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for the way I've treated you. I need to ask your forgiveness. There were people hugging each other and weeping and and the Spirit of God was so heavy in that place. The love of God just flowed through that building. The noon hour came and went, and very few people left and went to the cafeteria. They wanted, they were hungry for divine bread a lot more than they were for food for their physical body. 
occasionally there would be songs that would break out. And one in particular, the Glee Club, the Women's Glee Club, they were scattered throughout the auditorium. And they began to sing, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Classes were canceled for the rest of that day. Supper hour came, some left the building, but they began to come back in the evening. And almost every seat in that 1500 seat auditorium was full. And, and those that couldn't get in were standing along the walls. More prayer, more altar time. Some were giving counsel, some were rejoicing in the Lord. Classrooms in the basement were set up for meeting places for those that just needed to get alone with God. And, and God was just melting all these hearts in that refining fire of his presence. Classes were canceled for the week. The tone of the seminary revival, it was interesting because 450 seminary students had heard what was happening across the street and they came over. We were right across from them. And they came over and when they saw, they said, we've got to have this. They called an all-night prayer meeting, and they cried out to God for the same thing. God, we need a spiritual awakening. The next morning, <laughs> the next morning, the re of the regular service, I'm telling you, there were no formal speakers, but these people were, the seminary students were falling on their face before God. Some of the men, many of the men were married. They went and got their wives and brought them back. And couple after couple renewed their vows to God and, and, their, and their love for him. And they asked for forgiveness for their sins. And then they would stand and face each other and say, I'm so sorry for our marriage. I want it to work. And you saw lives changing. And people were just broken. I, I don't even know how else to say it. Even at 2.30 in the morning, there were still 300 people in that auditorium. Time didn't matter. It just didn't matter. You know, as word spread, telegrams, letters, uh, phone calls were coming in for urgent prayer all across the United States and Canada. Hundreds, hundreds of visitors were attracted to the campus by news reports. And I'll mention more about that later, but they came from Florida. They came from California, from Canada. We were in Kentucky. And, and some of them, one, one group was on their way to West Virginia for a family get-together. They stopped. They were so overcome by the Spirit, they said, we're not leaving. They stayed there for a week. By February the 10th, classes were resumed, but the auditorium was left open for prayer. Hughes Auditorium. And in the evening after classes, it filled one more time over and over for 184 hours without interruption the services continued no offering no scheduled meetings no paid advertising just the spirit of god drawing people in a way that you can't draw them yourself no human words can capture the full dimension of one divine moment I want to read something to you. It's a student diary. And I just want to read this one passage. His name was uh, Jeff Blake. And he said this, I sit in the middle of a contemporary Pentecost. A few moments ago, there was a spontaneous move of the Holy Spirit. I've never witnessed such an outpouring of God in my life. The scene is unbelievable. The altars flooding with needy souls time and time again. Witness is abundant. Release, freedom. There are tears, repentance, joy unspeakable, embracing spontaneous applause when a soul is celebrated. A thousand hearts lifted in songs of praise to a mighty God. Do we need revival? Oh, do we ever? But this is the kind of revival we need. Let's pray for spiritual awakening. Next week, I'll tell you a little more. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, we need your fire. We need you to burn the impurities out of us. We need a spiritual awakening in our lives. And God, I pray for that. I pray for that. Start with me, God. Start with me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
I'll see you next week. And if not, I'll know you aren't too interested in revival. I don't want that. I don't want that against me. <laughs> God bless. I'll see you next week.